Fellow Dominicans, good evening. I crave your indulgence once again to reiterate my total abhorrence of the behavior of persons in positions of influence who are causing the destruction of Dominica's good name and its image abroad. General elections will be held in the Commonwealth of Dominica on Friday, the 6th of December, 2019. Let us be very, very clear about this. Let us be clear also that the intimidation of voters and other law-abiding citizens in this country will stop in the prelude to voting. I will not have lawless persons attempt to frustrate decent voters on their way to the polls or destroy the democratic process in Dominica. Law enforcement officials have ex exercised as much restraint as is humanly possible. They have endured verbal abuse, physical abuse, threats of violence, injury, and even threats of death. Many law-abiding citizens have been harassed. We saw on video on social media, His Lordship, the Bishop of Roseau, enduring the worst kind of vile and filthy verbal abuse and, quite frankly, assault as persons in Marigot got into his face to shout their abuse. This is the constituency of the leader of the opposition, United Workers' Party. This is where the road blockage and burning of waste in the public road started. The chief abuser of his lordship, the bishop, seen clearly on video was Brian Linton, the brother of the leader of the opposition. Getting to the airport via the main route to Marigot, of Marigot is now akin to walking the gauntlet. The bishop and other travelers had to physically carry their suitcases along the streets, past burning debris in Marigot, as they endured the, abu the abuse of the supporters of the leader of the opposition. It is clear that the leader of the opposition, Mr. Lennox Linton, does not have it in him what it takes to publicly apologize to his lordship for the conduct of his brother, Brian Linton, the UWP supporters and the UWP supporters. Even Lennox Linton does not like the person. He should respect the office of the head of the Catholic Church in Dominica. He owes his lordship, the bishop, an unqualified apology for his brother's conduct and that of his supporters who acted at his behest. I therefore take this opportunity on behalf of the Christian community of Dominica to apologize most sincerely to his lordship for what must have been a very frightening encounter and experience as he went about his lawful business. I am quite alarmed that to date other church leaders have not found it necessary to lend a voice of concern, if not condemnation, to the campaign of hooliganism embarked upon by the leader of the opposition and Edison James, the former Prime Minister of Dominica. Mr. James is clearly seeking relevance at the expense of decency and at the expense of his country. I am yet to understand Mr. Linton's thinking in this matter, other than a love of violence and lawlessness. The economy of this country is now being adversely affected. My dear people, we awoke this morning to the hurtful news of the cancellation of some flights by seaborne airlines due to the hooliganism of the supporters of the opposition. I must also inform you that the cruise lines which visit our shores are now also contemplating whether they will suspend calls on Dominica indefinitely. This morning alone, December 4th, the Azamari journey, a cruise ship 
with about 1,000 passengers who were to spend the day in Dominica turned back and will no longer en enter our port. This ship visits Dominica once every two, every two years and, and such a constellation is a major loss. Executives of the cruise line felt compelled to take this decision as a result of the negative feedback they have been receiving about the violence and scare tactics employed by the opposition in various parts of Dominica. The United Workers Party and its leadership have publicly condoned the actions of these lawless pockets of their supporters. We in Dominica have prided ourselves on the country's reputation as one of the friendliest, the safest in the Caribbean for our people and for our visitors. Dominica has spent years building and improving on our reputation as one of the best ecotourism islands in the Caribbean. What it took us years to build is now being destroyed in the space of a few days for the selfish gain of a single group. The Ministry of Tourism has also received calls from other cruise, cruise lines querying the safety of the passengers in Dominica. The actions of the leadership of the United Workers Party and its supporters are impacting negatively on the image of Dominica and ordinary Dominicans are now beginning to feel the repercussions of the UWP's callousness and indifference. Hair breeders, vendors, tour operators, entertainers, artists, popular tour shops such as the Kalanago Territory, um, tour stops such as the Kalanago Territory, clothing and souvenir vendors, bars, restaurants, shopkeepers, wholesalers, those who set up their tents last night, taxi drivers who lined up this morning, service providers at the various sites, all waited and looked forward to the arrival of the Azamari journey. They were all very disappointed at the news of the cancellation. All these people, their families and staff, will feel this loss in their pockets. Dominica cannot afford to receive another black eye at the hands of the United Workers Party. We have worked too hard, done too much, and come too far to build a solid, positive national reputation to have it destroyed by this lawless bunch. Just imagine visitors trying to get back to the ship or airport and being stuck behind one of the blockades of the UWP supporters. Just imagine the fear and the fear that they could have. This is a most unfortunate situation. But as a consequence of the recklessness and immaturity of the opposition leader and his supporters in Dominica, and after consultation with several key stakeholders, it is my duty to inform you that our worst fears have been realized. All cruise ships, all cruise ship calls to Dominica have been cancelled effective immediately and that cessation of services shall remain in effect until after the general election period when hopefully this madness would have subsided and we would have bring to an end to this unwarranted blotch on our otherwise pristine, pristine record of peace, safety and tranquility. I hope the leader of the opposition Mr. Lennox Linton, former Prime Minister Mr. Edison James, and their foreign partners and advisors can sleep comfortably tonight, knowing that they have now left scores of families in Dominica penniless for the next few days and possibly weeks. This is a sad, sorry day in the rebuild efforts of this country. The lawlessness and irresponsibility of a thoughtless few will now jeopardize the social and economic well-being of all. They are seeking confrontation. Their wish is to be arrested. Their wish is for national unrest. But I urge law-abiding citizens to continue to display restraint. Let us get Friday's election behind us. Let us conclude this process peacefully, 
and without strife. This lawlessness shall come to a screeching halt immediately thereafter. I give you my word, my dear citizens and residents. Let me pause to assure all our people that we remain a safe island as there have been no injuries to persons or deaths. Furthermore, we have just received additional manpower from the regional security system to ensure all our people and visitors are safe and free to move around. Please let me speak to this matter from the wider economic perspective. I wish to remind all Dominicans that with the demise of, the banana, of bananas as the mainstay, tourism is now the lifeblood of our economy. The government is in the process of building a modern tourism plant, spearheaded by several world-class international hotel brands. The construction of a new airport, which the Chinese have agreed to finance, is, in, is intended to strengthen the tourism sector. After all that Dominicans and the government have accomplished to build this country back after the ravages of Hurricane Maria, there could be no worse blow to our efforts than the suspension of airline services and now cruise line services. A, suspe a, a, sus a suspension which is not as a consequence of bad weather, but is a direct result of bad behavior. One wonders how any political party or leader could so uncaringly act against the interests of the people and country they say they want to lead. The recklessness, lawlessness, and hooliganism sanctioned by Mr. Lennox Linton and embarked upon by a lawless handful of his supporters, particularly his own constituents, is now tearing away at the heart of Dominica Dominican tourism experience. If we do not have peace, safety, and tranquility, we have nothing to offer as a tourism destination. The behavior of Mr. Linton is also of tremendous concern to other world leaders, many of whom have been extremely generous to Dominica in recent years. It is not for me to articulate their future foreign policy decisions, but I can assure you that many leaders with whom Dominica currently enjoys very close and cooperative relationships have made it clear in recent days that they cannot and will not be associated with an administration capable of behaving in the manner that we are now seeing from Mr. Linton and his cohorts. And let me say, this lawlessness and hooliganism is not hurting the Dominican Labour Party. To the contrary, analysts may one day reason that its impact on decent people and independent voters was so serious that it might actually have helped the Dominican Labour Party. What is of concern to me, as your Prime Minister, is that the recklessness of the opposition is hurting Dominica. Next Monday morning, general elections would by then have been behind us. But there will be a massive cleanup operation ahead of us. Cleanup of our streets and cleanup of our country's reputation. Only Almighty God knows how long that cleanup will take. Thinking Dominicans must ask themselves, should the very people who are creating this carnage on the streets of Dominica be entrusted with the task of national cleanup and national healing. Can they be trusted? Will they be interested in such a task? What would be their style of governance? Dominica must now rebuild relations with the outside world. Dominica has to repackage and remarket itself as a safe, peaceful, and fun-loving place to visit and relax or do business, this will not be an easy task at all. The winter season has already started. Given these present occurrences, it may now very well be a bleak one for Dominica. 
I am deeply concerned about the short and medium term impact of this lawlessness and hooliganism on safety and on the social and economic fabric of our society. So concerned that I requested sister nations in the regional security system to send us support for our police force, just in case the instigators and perpetrators entertain the idea of continuing, continuing their nonsense into tomorrow and Friday. As a consequence of that request, both police and soldiers from regional law enforcement agencies coming together under the ambit of the regional security system have arrived in Dominica to assist with the preservation of law and order in our country. I am determined to keep the majority of citizens of Dominica safe from the few opposition hooligans. At this time, we are inconvenienced by the lawlessness and hooliganism of some with the blocking of roads and burning of tires. This burning is already taking a toll on many asthmatics, elderly, asthmatics, elderly and other persons who have adverse reactions to such smoke. It is clear to me that the leadership of the United Workers Party does not care what their lawlessness is doing to the health of the country, the economy, and certainly not to the health and well-being of ordinary Dominicans some of their own supporters included. I wish to assure residents that law and order in, in the country will be maintained. We have ex exercised considerable tolerance. We have tried to reason with these people. We have appealed to the leaders to change course. We have appealed to the church and the private sector to lend a voice of wisdom and guidance in this matter. We have asked the leader of the opposition and his party to call for calm and restraint and to ask the supporters to stop the injurious behavior, but all to no avail. I say to you today, law and order shall be maintained in the Commonwealth of Dominica. There shall be free, fair and peaceful elections in this country on Friday. I have given both the airlines and the cruise sector our assurance of safety and security for the guests while visiting our island. I appeal once again to those misguided youths acting on the direction of persons who should know better to seize and desist from the flagrant violation of the law. Please walk away from your lawless behavior. I have a duty to ensure that law-abiding citizens can go about their business free from fear and without intimidation or unnecessary inconvenience. As Prime Minister of this country, I met with the High Command of the Police Force to make clear that law and order must be maintained and that, as of tonight, perpetrators of lawlessness who endanger the rights and well-being of citizens and visitors must be dealt with utilizing the full force of the law. I appeal to supporters of the Labour Party, to all citizens, residents, and visitors to our beautiful country, to turn the other cheek. Please turn the other cheek. Ignore those who are bent on confrontation and provocation. Be assured, however, that in short order, what needs to be done to preserve respect for law and order in this country will be done. Dominicans living and working abroad, I wish to appeal to you to get involved in this discussion. You have as much at stake in this matter as those of us living on island. You need to call your family and friends in Dominica and admonish them against continuing this silly behavior or sanctioning the actions of those behind it. It is serving no useful purpose. It is harming the image of our island. To those of you who wish to come home and participate in these elections, you are most welcome to do so. You have nothing to fear. Voting in Dominica is free and fair. Dominica, in spite of its lawlessness, is safe. 
Dominica belongs to Dominicans. You are Dominican, and you have a right to participate in determining the future direction of this country. Fellow Dominicans, I am unlikely to address you again before the start of polling. I appeal once again for peaceful general elections. I appeal again for common sense to prevail. But I assure all Dominicans that this lawlessness shall end and it shall not be permitted to interfere in the democratic expression of will by registered electors in this country. Thank you for listening to me. And again, I give you my personal assurance that at the end, that an end to this unsavory episode is at hand and will be brought to a halt within a matter of hours. Law-abiding citizens of this country can be rest assured of this. I call again for peace. I call again for the respect of law and of law, our laws and our systems in this country. May God bless our country, may God bless our efforts, and may God continue to guide over us in this difficult period. And again, rest assured that we shall hold general elections in Dominica on December 6th, and people will be able to exercise their franchise and the democ democratic right to so do in an atmosphere of peace, tranquility, and we will have free and fair elections in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. You are listening to an address to the nation. An address by Prime Minister Roosevelt.